Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Pick a side, stupid. This week is all about Christmas music. It is the most wonderful time of the year, and it is the best time for music. Uh, all the best songs came out of Christmas time. And even those that were not made specifically for Christmas, like Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, uh, is still a great Christmas song, despite being written in a heat wave in California. So uh, we all know it's the best music around. Uh, unless you worked retail at any point, then you probably got sick of a few of them, but they're like the lame versions that the stores play because like the regular versions are somehow too edgy for retail. I don't know, it's weird. Um, but anyways, all the questions about, uh, about the debate tonight will be about um, Christmas music. And we also have some trivia for in between uh, each question, each debate, while everybody's voting, um, there'll be some trivia questions asked by our friend here. Uh, first person I'll intro for tonight, May Keith. Hey, May, how's it going? Hey, Sean. It's, uh, it's going good. Merry almost Christmas. Thanks. Merry almost Christmas to you as well. Um, did you enjoy the research this week? It seems like it'd be a fun one. You know, I did like the research this week. There's not, like, usually you can kind of Google, like, trivia about whatever subject and then kind of go off in any direction. Um, but for this one, I felt like I had to pick, like, songs or artists and do, like, a little bit of a deep dive. So that was kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Sweet. So we'll all learn something by the end of the night. Yeah, we'll all learn a little something uh, from Wikipedia mostly. So I don't know how exact these facts are, but they're fun. We're going to say very exact because I rely on Wikipedia for everything. So Sounds if good. it's wrong, then I'm wrong about everything. And maybe vaccines aren't that bad. Like, who knows? <laughs> but uh, anyways, we also have, so uh, our That's friends that will be. So Nashville's on a job on you, I can tell already. <laughs> who has? <laughs> Nashville's on a job oh, yeah. on you already oh i fear for the future <laughs> uh, all right so for the trivia portion tonight answering these questions we will have our friend wayne maston hey wayne how's it going i'm good sean so you're uh keeping tennessee from getting snow huh yeah i'm the uh heat heat miser is that what they call the, the guy that yeah, yeah. Keeps snow away so that's me well you should come back up here and melt my driveway <laughs> <laughs> um i would i'll try but thank you for saying that i'm hot i appreciate it Wayne. <laughs> and, um on a scale of one to ten how how do you think your uh christmas music trivia knowledge is like 10 being the best um i'm probably somewhere in the three to five range okay um you know I mean, it's dated you know i mean if you ask me something about what happened um in 2017 i'm probably not going to be able to do, do too well with with 27 yeah. Christmas music. Well, that's fine. There hasn't been a good Christmas song since Mariah Carey put out All I Want for Christmas is You. I mean, well, what's a good I, recent I Christmas song? So um, was, you know, I was going to say something more like a Death Day for Dallas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost every Christmas song after like 1959 is kind of useless, in my opinion. So, um, you know. Anyways, all right. Uh, we also have our friend Lloyd Legacy Sharp that will be answering some trivia questions. Hey, Lloyd. Hi, John. Hey, I like the festive look that you've got going there. Thank you. I tried to go with the theme as best I could. Yeah, it's great. Um, and again, on a scale of one to 10, how, how good do you think your knowledge of Christmas music is? Well, Wayne Nesson already took three-fifths count, so I guess I'll say six out of ten, seven if you count, you know, a bad song. Yeah, seven. So, great. You you know a lot. That's great. You're going to probably get all of these right. I know, I, I, know more than I, I know more than I want to. There's a few songs I wish I didn't know about, but because I do, I, I know them. Sure, yeah, I hear you. And um, we have a bunch of comics that will be debating as well. So let's start with our friend Corey Saunders. Hey, Corey, how's it going? I'm great. How are you, Sean? I'm all right. I would say um, if during the debate tonight 
you have the chance to pick a category. You might want to go with artists. There might be something in there about Mariah Carey. You know, I you feel like that's me. yeah. I I literally I prepared for this today. I literally read an article about trivia just about that one Mariah Carey Christmas album. Like that's <laughs> what I spent time doing today. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, not. I don't know if we're going to deep dive on the Mariah Carey album. But uh, yeah, you might not think so, but I think it's going to happen either way, okay? You're gonna... okay. <laughs> if I have right. anything to do with it. Well, that's Corey. Okay, uh, we also have our friend Angela Stoyer with us. Hey, Angela. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I love, I love really super annoying people who don't realize they're annoying and also waltzes, so I adore Christmas music. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so you, you ran a record shop. Um, are there any, um, records like, like Christmas themed records that, um, that we should know about that we don't know about? That you don't know about. Yeah. Let me think. Let me think. Um, there's some great, uh, there is a Christmas, uh, record by a guy named King Yuskenowitz and the Yuskenowitz Stones. <laughs> King, actually... I can I never remember whether it's pronounced Yuskenowitz or Yustovich. It might be pronounced Yustovich. It's really hard to spell. Anyway, it's a bunch of guys who were in a garage rock band and they all decided to play each other's instruments. So they played instruments they couldn't play. And then they pretended that they were um a a guy who got stuck inside a bowling alley. <laughs> and uh and they put out some records that are fun and very sloppy and they have a Christmas record. Oh, nice. All right. Well, this sounds like a lot of fun. So they're stuck in a bowling alley on Christmas. That On that one, yeah. The rest of the wow. time, they're just stuck in a regular bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, we also have our friend Tyler Derniak with us tonight. Hey, Tyler. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? What's your What's your favorite Christmas song? Um... I, I kind of like the, uh, I've been listening to, what was it, The Waitress's Merry Christmas recently. Um, that's been pretty good. Um, that and just the Peanuts soundtrack for Charlie Brown Christmas. Sure, just on repeat. Yeah, the entire thing just looped. Okay. O Tannenbaum, uh, skating, Linus and Lucy. <laughs> um, and you're just dancing like it's the final scene of the... Oh yeah, I'm, I I do the uh like the the arms straight down, legs forward dance. <laughs> does, not, not Franklin. Um, who does that one? Does Shermie does that dance? Shermie okay. does the arms down, legs. None of this. You guys don't need that information. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, we also have our friend Nick Martucci with us tonight. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Hey, Sean, going good. Uh, what's the background that you got going there? Oh, this is uh, this is just me and my fellow band aid uh, bandmates. <laughs> we uh, we recorded the classic Christmas song. Do they know it's Christmas? Oh right, okay. The and... song where they say tonight, thank God it's them instead of you. <laughs> <laughs> where the only water flowing is the bitter tears. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you made that recording, Nick. It was very yeah, me and <laughs> just. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, we also have our friend Ken Green with us, who just adores Christmas. is very excited for this time of year, and uh, he's probably going to tell us uh, his favorite Christmas songs. It might be tough for him to <laughs> narrow it down to a top ten, but I think he can try. Uh, Oh, did he just leave because I said that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think he just left because of it. Oh, hey, Ken. He's back. <laughs> now his mic's off. I think he's just messing with me. <laughs> his mic's just not working. Okay. I want uh, Wi-Fi for Christmas. Does Mike give me Wi-Fi for Christmas? Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry, were you talking to me? I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I know it's hard for you to probably pick a favorite Christmas song, uh, but if you could just, do you have like a top 10? Because I know you love them all. <laughs> I do. I love, I'm, I'm a Christmas, everybody knows me as Christmas guy. I, uh, I, I keep Christmas in my heart all year long. Uh, I mean, physically, because I have the implant and it has a, a, a ribbon on it. So yeah, 
Um, but no, I, I hate Christmas songs. But I did hear one today. It's, it's, it moved up into my top five by Carly Rae Jepsen. It's called uh, It's Not Christmas for Somebody Cries. Uh, <laughs> as, it's my, I heard it today. It's my new favorite song. Uh, I'll give you a couple of lyrics. Uh, my boyfriend is a vegan, so they fed him fish. My uncle made it worse by talking politics. I had a few opinions, might have started a fight. Well, it's not Christmas, so somebody cries. Uh, oh. Grandpa ate the gummies that we meant to hide. We <laughs> tried to play it off like it was a holiday high. He unwrapped all the presents and he ruined the surprise. Well, it's not Christmas, so somebody cries. Uh, that's my yeah. new favorite song. <laughs> that's great. I, if it, I mean, honestly, I think what you should have done was just try to act like you had just written that just now. And we would have all <laughs> believed you, because I've never heard it before. I would have just been oh, like, nice. Kenny Ray Jepsen, that's my name now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we also have our friend Rick Canavan with us. Hey, Rick, what's happening? Hey, buddy. Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. What What Christmas song have you been listening to on repeat this year? Uh, I, uh, I, it, I don't know if I can be less prepared for this debate than I am right now. I don't think I've listened to a Christmas song yet this year. Okay, well, they're all the same ones from last year. So just tell me one that you like. Uh, yeah, I like um, I like a lot of uh, Christmas songs. Uh, specifically, I think my favorite one is one that you don't like. Okay. Uh, uh, Wonderful Christmas Time. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, that's a really bad one, Rick. I, I love the Paul McCartney version, but more than that, I like uh, there's a band out of Portland, Maine called As Fast As that does a great cover. Okay. Yeah. I always think about, you know, what if somebody just covered this? It could be the greatest cover of all time. Like, <laughs> Wonderful Christmas Time is very deserving of a cover. Okay, Rick, well, I like it, Sean. I like it, okay? <laughs> and now, in honor of Ken, I would like to read some song lyrics also. <laughs> they stabbed it with their steely knives, but they just can't Kill the beast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Rick. Uh, oh, we also. Close to your heart. Yeah, it, it is close to my heart. Okay, we also have our friend Laura Clark with us. Hey, Laura, how's it going? Hey, Sean. Um, sorry, Rick, they stabbed it with their steely knives, but they still can't kill the roast beast. <laughs> 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 I was like, please let me be next, because I won't remember that chestnut if he does another interview first. <laughs> how's it how's it going? How are you? I'm good. Nice. I'm, I'm good. I just moved to Austin. Uh, what? Yeah. It's wow. great. Oh um, my room is like it, my room is like the same size of my last room, except that it's not like the the slanted part of the house isn't in it so it's also twice the size of my last room oh yeah you have a lot more headroom yeah i can yeah like it's square all around it's amazing and it's an exciting yeah. development yeah you moved to austin during a pandemic <laughs> oh, no. All of the rest. Can, you, can you go can you go anywhere can you go out anywhere or do anything or well, i have to uh i i am super essential at my office um, because if I weren't there, I don't know who would take the FedEx envelopes inside or order <laughs> sandwiches on the internet for, uh, for virtual meetings. So, yeah, I have to be out and about anyway. Um, so you're basically like an emergency ward person. Like yeah. A, a level. yeah. Okay. It's, I, I spend a lot of time in this office that is meant to hold like a hundred people and it just, it's like me and the shining and like, I, <laughs> like, I want my little like tricycle thing. <laughs> so. so when you're alone in your office and it's just you, are you playing Christmas music overhead? Um, well, so Yes, but I want to be clear, like, I only like the, the Christmas music that celebrates the glory of the Christ child. So <laughs> it's a lot of Mormon Tabernacle Choir and things like that. Um, honestly, I think the Wexford Carol is a little commercial. Uh, so really, 
you know, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, stuff like that um, <laughs> is my jam. Yeah, well, that's great. I am really looking forward to uh, you staying in this character as the debate goes on. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, next up, we also have our friend Katie Baker with us. Hey, Katie, how's it going? Hi, hello. Um, as, uh, I've been working in retail, so I get to um, listen to the um, corporate-issued uh, Christmas mix, and there'll be a lot of, like, uh, either different co covers of the same song, or even then, just, like, how all Christmas songs are just, like, different variations of, like, these words and mentioning the same elements, so it's, yeah. it's uh, yeah, it gets, it gets aggravating. I, I, so I have mixed feelings as to whether or not people should write more Christmas songs, because it's going to be more of the <laughs> same, but to just cover the same song over and over again, like, how can you, like, bring something new to this rendition of your mean one mr grinch like you just you don't sound like you mean it at all like it doesn't it's all <laughs> it's played out yeah for sure um so you're stuck listening to the generic christmas music all day but what do you what do you, what christmas song do you turn on when you are at home when you get your own time I guess I like kind of without words or like wordless variations where it's like either or like Spanish guitar, I think, or mm. something where it's like, yeah, this is chill. I can uh, see myself being in the, uh, the lobby of a nice hotel, like, you know, not during the <laughs> pandemic, but like where it's just like, yeah, this is this is chill and not the meh, 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 meh. I don't need that. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Um, so let's get into the debate. All the questions, as I said, will be about Christmas music. Um, each comic will have one minute and a 30 second rebuttal to make their case. In between each debate, May Keith will be asking trivia questions. Maybe we should start before we even uh, do a debate question, start with a trivia question. What do you think, May? Good idea, Sean. Cool. Uh, all right. So do we want to do, are we doing um, one and then a debate and then the other one? Yeah, we'll do one now and then after the debate, we'll do another one. So I think it's Wayne and Lloyd that will be uh, going back and forth here. Uh, Lloyd, since you are so festive, I'm going to give you the option to go first. How's that sound? Are you Yay, thank you. there? <laughs> <Hooray. laughs> All right. All uh, right. So, Lloyd, any category is open. We have uh, classics, new, kids, artists, and wildcard. Uh, a classic. All right. Your question is about the song Silver Bells. So this song was originally titled Tinkle Bells. <laughs> Why did the writer, Jay Livingston, change the lyrics? Your options are A, because Disney sued for copyright infringement since it was so close to Tinkerbell, the character. B, because Long John Silver's restaurant paid him so that they could use it in marketing. C, because his wife explained to him that tinkle is a slang, ter slang term for urine. Or D, because Jay had bought his wife a silver ring and wanted to convince her it was as good as gold. <laughs> You're going with A? A, yes. I, a. I so a, a. a is a really good guess because Disney will sue everyone and everything. Um, mm -hmm. But no, it's the urine one. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, a, that was a great guess, Lloyd. Good shot. I'm going to give you one point for that anyway because I like to add, I like to pad the score. So Lloyd gives you <laughs> a point. Nice. Um, so Tinkle Bells could have been the song now. <laughs> Tinkle bells. <laughs> I was saying that around my house. It's hilarious. Give it a shot. I would have just loved to see the conversation with him and his wife where he's just like, come on now. Obviously, that's not true. <laughs> Tinkle bells is a song that they play at the hospital for the little old folks when they need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, all right. So our first debate tonight, let's do it. It will be uh, between Tyler Derniak and Angela Sawyer. So, Tyler, do you want to go first or second? Uh, I'll go second. Second, okay. 
Um, Angela, you can pick from these categories. Uh, you could go classics, new, kids, artists, or wild card. I'm going to try classics. Classics, okay. Um, so your, your question, the first question of the night is, which would be more helpful while delivering gifts? A reindeer with a red nose or a donkey that speaks Italian? <laughs> well, we all understand that Dominic the donkey uh, is the only living being that can navigate uh, uh, the Italian landscape properly. So that's very useful. Unfortunately, Italy, even though it's, uh, Italy is the tiny sliver of the world, even though uh, Italians would like us to think otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go with Rudolph because, uh, e because fog lights work everywhere you go. Tyler. Oh, oh, all right. I, I didn't know if there was more. Uh, I, I got to go with the was it Do Dominic the donkey that 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 speaks Italian. That's he's clearly more important to delivering gifts because as we all know, Christmas presents have and always will be distributed by the mafia. And the only <laughs> way to get these presents is they fall off the back of a sleigh. And the only way to know where they're going to be dropped is you got to have Dominic. He's the inside donkey. He knows. He can speak the Italian language that these mafia men speak. It's the only way that you can get the presents to deliver them. Here's the thing, though. It's 2020, and we've all become more woke than we were before the pandemic started. And so we know that the only group of people that it is allowable to truly shit on are Italian people. And <laughs> so... Uh, Rudolph, at least being from um, uh, the Arctic Circle, <laughs> has a chance at making friends around the world. First of all, Rudolph being from the Arctic Circle isn't going to help anything due to the like increasing global warming melting the Arctic Circle. More great powers have been trying to lay claims to Arctic territories. Rudolph is suddenly going to be in disputed zones. You know what zone is not disputed? Italy, because no one else is claiming Italy. <laughs> and Dominic, he everyone, you know, he's 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 a good guy. He's a good fella. We, we were all, as Angela said, we're all much more woke this year. I used to think yeah. Santa. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, I really was interested to know where that was going next. But <laughs> unfortunately, we lost. We ran out of time. So, um, you know, I can't pick who won this one. But it, you can. Uh, it's up to you, the audience. So head into the poll. If you look in the description below, right on YouTube, uh, there's a link. And you click on that, that'll bring you to a poll where you can vote for either Angela or Tyler. And uh, we'll give you a few seconds to vote for that. And then we'll let you know who uh, who's moving on. And in the meantime, uh, we got some more trivia with May Keith. Thanks, Sean. All right, Wayne. So Lloyd is ahead by one point, but you can make up the difference pretty quickly. OK, I'll try. All right, so uh, I'm just I'm going to follow the category that the debaters used. So we're going to ask you a classic question. All right. All right, this one's this one's a little hard, but I believe in you. You ready? Sure. OK. If you get all of the presents mentioned in each of the 12 days of Christmas, meaning you wind up with 12 partridges and 12 pear trees by the end of it, how many overall birds did your lover give to you? Here are your options. A, 12 birds. B, 144 birds. C, 184 birds. Or D, 365 birds. Well, let's see. You get 12 partridges because you get one a day for 12 days. You get two, um, 22, um, whatever the next one is. Turtle doves, I think, Turtle right? Doves. Yeah. Well, now we're up to uh, 34. And then you'd get um, 30 of 
French hens. Where am I at? <laughs> um, and then you get four calling birds times nine. That's 36 plus uh, whatever the previous one was. Uh, 66. What were my choices again? 12, 144, 184, or 365. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to go with the gross. You're going to go with the gross, the even gross. So you're going with 144. That was the tricky one. That one is not correct. It's uh, it's 184. Okay. Uh -huh. But I'm giving you three points for doing impressive math on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, that was, um, you know, he's trying to be accurate. I thought you were going to get out an abacus for a second there. <laughs> counting them up. Um, all right, well, let's take a look at how people voted here for, you know, this first debate between Angela and Tyler and see who, who the crowd chose to move on to the next round. Will it be Tyler with his Zoom background of, Macaulay Culkin, who's not really in the room with him, or, uh, or Angela, who has a Zoom background of posters and stuff that that's clearly some from the internet, right? That's not that's your room. That's your real room. Okay. That's my real room. Yeah. Um, this is my real Tennessee Titans flag behind me. I need a few more posters in here, actually. Um, all right. Okay. A close one. By one single vote, uh, edging out the competition, Angela Sawyer wins round one. Yeah. Tyler, you were robbed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good first debate. Uh, next up, let's have Ken Green and Katie Baker. <laughs> Unmuted. All right, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I screwed that up again. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Um, Ken, do you want to go first or second? Oh boy, I will go. I'm gonna try second. I usually go first. I'll do second. Second. Okay. Uh, um, so, Katie, you can pick from new kids, artists, or wild card. Um, I'm gonna go with wild card. What? Wild card. Okay. Come on. Ah. No, um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> This is this is a real fun Christmas song by Dan Fogelberg. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but a um, <laughs> couple people. All right, great. Um, so your question is: You run into an old lover in a grocery store all back in town for Christmas, and you decide to go to a bar, but all the bars are closed. Do you just call it a night and tell them it was nice to see them? Or do you go buy a six pack of beer and drink it in their car? I'm gonna buy a six pack of beer and drink it in their bar. Cause if I'm in the grocery store on Christmas, um, I'm gonna be lonely anyway. And um, uh, plus I'd be like, uh, you know, you can't, you can't just, just go home. Cause uh, you know, we, we got, we still haven't, you know, finished like crying and reminiscing about old <laughs> times. And that's really important. And I want to be in their car so that that way um, I can just like leave if I'm like, uh, like, okay, this is getting weird. That way I wouldn't have to push a person out of my car. But uh, yeah, I'm doing the, the drinks in the car time. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. First of all, if you're in a grocery store, I uh, went to Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah. 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 Your night is already fucked up. It means your, your, whole, your whole thing this year is bad luck. And hooking up with this person on Christmas Eve, it's going to be something bad happening. Just call it a night, go home and say, you know what? I'm going to use this night to cut my losses. Because you get in that car, <laughs> you're going to end up on some kind of wild robbery spree. You're going to like break into somebody's house because you both got drunk. There's going to be no making out. You're going to like steal presents from like an orphanage or some shit like that. <laughs> cops, cops, cops are chasing you. You know, then you have to drive and get away. You're hiding in the woods in some like wet swampy thing and they find you. Helicopters are everywhere. If you're looking for a date on Christmas Eve, you've already fucked up. It's done. It's over. Uh, just cut your losses. Go home. Don't get in that car. It's going to be bad news. Nothing good is going to happen there. Oh, I'm going to take uh, the, the only thing that, that I got and uh, get in the car because, uh, you know, maybe a wild crime spree is what my Christmas needs. And uh, 
I would I wouldn't go for like uh you know robbing an orphanage and if he like said something crazy like oh let's do this I'd be like hey do you want to sit and think about sad things and then we'd just start crying again so then I'd subdue that and uh, either way it's like uh, <laughs> would you rather have good things happen or interesting things and uh, parking <laughs> lot um, hold down or not is is uh, you know that's that's what I want for my Christmas Eve. Oh my God! No, no, no! That person is alone on Christmas Eve for a reason. They've lost. <laughs> <laughs> they have lost all their other friends, and you're the last sucker left on their Christmas list. And you come walking up there and like, I'll spend Christmas Eve with you. And next thing you know, you're being chased by the cops, and you're in jail, spending new Christmas in jail, which would be a great Christmas song, by the way. <laughs> I may have to write that one. Actually, that's a good song. Uh, yeah, don't uh, don't mess around with that. That's that's bad news. Say hi. Let's meet up after the new year. Let's see where things are. Let's see if you still got your shit together. But don't do it on Christmas Eve. That that is not. There's no Christmas Eve magic. That's a, that's bullshit. Don't don't talk. Don't talk to that. All right. Uh, well, hey, a lot of good points here, and uh, it's up to you, the audience, to choose a winner. So head into the link in the description below. Uh, pick a side, stupid .com, hashtag poll, and click on either Ken Green or Katie Baker to vote for who you like to move on. And um, Ken was talking about stealing uh, gifts from an orphanage in this crime spree. And I don't know that he convincingly that it sounds like it would be worse to get into the car as a result, but you know, it was fun to listen to though. Um, all right. So while we're waiting for votes to come in, uh, May, you want to, try and ask another trivia question of one of these guys? Absolutely. Lloyd, you are on deck now. Or I guess you're, I don't really know what baseball means. So you're up to the plate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's your turn. So Lloyd, it is your turn. And we are asking you a wild card question. Are you ready? You're muted. You don't look ready, but <laughs> nice. All right. All right, right, Lloyd. Your question is, what is the highest selling single of all time? Your options are A, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas, B, Bing Crosby's White Christmas, C, The Grinch's You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, or D, Wham's Faith. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking highest selling single of all time. Uh, <laughs> okay. So the, the problem with this is uh, uh, I fear that this is a trick question because I don't think that the highest grossing single of all time should ever be a Christmas song. Uh, but I have heard news recently that a certain uh, veteran singer uh, topped charts with some of her, her, her music that was related to the holiday. So I'm going to guess Mariah Carey. It's a really good guess because she has made hundreds of millions of dollars off that song. But uh, that is incorrect. It's actually White Christmas. What? Uh Highest, he has, not only does he have the, the number one highest selling single, he also has the number three highest selling single with, uh, I forget, one of his others. <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's not it number one. Be, I thought it would be at least Wham, if, if, I, if, if that wasn't it. Wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah, nope, um, White Christmas. Good guess though, Lloyd, I'm giving you a point for that anyway. So uh, it's, it's you're only down by one point so far. Okay, yeah. okay. I mean, uh, everybody knows that Wham, you know, Faith was very good, but that Limp Bizkit did it slightly better. So, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I'll forgive you for that. <laughs> 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 all right. It's all right. Whatever. I, <laughs> I oh. do like the bit of just Lloyd being like the biggest George Michael fan. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, the votes are in here, and moving on to the next round is Ken Green. Ken Green Woo! telling us to stay out of the car, stay out of trouble. So, um, and we're all looking forward to the Christmas in jail song. So 
it's it's got to happen by this time next year we should be talking about how there is a new christmas song worth listening to and it's christmas in jail <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got the team together already. We're working on it. We got yeah, a videographer. <laughs> we got we got it all together. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming together. Um, all right. Next up, we have Rick Canavan and Nick Martucci. I am here. Hey, <laughs> Rick. Um, would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go. I'll go second. Second. Okay. Nick, uh, what category would you like? You could pick from. Let's see. New. Kids or artists? Let's go artists. Okay. Uh, oh, man. I feel like I should save this first one for... I mean, I, I don't want a lot for Christmas, so you can uh, give me this question. Can you make a point here that I consider the new kids are artists? So really, you can answer <laughs> those questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, this question... Um, meant for Corey Saunders, but g going to Nick Bartucci tonight. Uh, which artist that famously sang a Christmas song would you rather spend Christmas with? Mariah Carey or Alvin and the Chipmunks? Holy fuck. <laughs> Nobody wants to spend any amount of time ever with Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> maybe the worst Chipmunk-based band in history. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know, they're the worst. Chipettes are the best. It is uh -huh. really, uh, if it was the Chipettes, I'd hang out with the Chipettes, but it isn't. It's the Queen of Christmas. It's the woman who's still topping the charts uh, 26 years later. It's, uh, she's absolutely the best. I'll hang out with her any holiday. We're going to go on an Arbor Day vacation. We're going to do a nice <laughs> President's Day hike. No, it's me and Mariah every day. Fuck Alvin, fuck Simon, fuck Theodore, and fuck Dave for, for domesticating those chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be hanging out with Alvin and the chipmunks because they got the dopest shit. Time! <laughs> <laughs> No, like they don't even have a hula hoop. I bet I bet Mariah Carey has a hula hoop. <laughs> she never had to, to to ask her her human daddy slash manager for for a hula hoop. <laughs> you can't really say that that the chipmunks have the dopest shit. Uh, they are <laughs> severely lacking in in most material items. I think uh, I I wouldn't buy anything for a chipmunk. I would buy everything for my queen. Time. <laughs> you know how many hula hoops they've gotten since they've written that song? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote one Christmas list in 1952, and ever since then, Dave Seville, here's another hula hoop. Here's another hula hoop. <laughs> that's why it's so much fun, is because now it's turned into like a hamster village of hula hoops. And it's so much fucking fun, guys. There's a Nintendo inside. You can play Super Mario World. Hi. <laughs> All right. Well, a lot of good points here. Uh, but it's up to you, the audience, to choose your winner. So head into the poll. Uh, you can find the link right below the YouTube video in the description. Just click on that where it says pick a side stupid hashtag poll. And you can vote for Rick or Nick. And um, while the voting is happening, why don't we turn it back over to Mickey? Thanks, Sean. All right, Wayne, are you ready? Uh, you've, you've got a lead here. You want to maintain it? Yes, I'd love to maintain it. All right, I am going to ask you an Alvin and the Chipmunks question. Oh. Rick was very close on the year. The song was written in 1958, actually. Oh, uh, no, that's... But very close. I'm going to give you a trivia point right now, Rick. You just, you're, you're in the game that I was too. So I, so. I always get that confused with when they ratified Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot happened that decade. Uh, okay, so your question, Wayne. In 1958, the Alvin and the Chipmunks song, Christmas Don't Be Late, won three Grammys. I'm going to read you four possible Grammys category. You're going to tell me which one they did not win. Okay? Okay. 
All right, so the Grammys that they won or didn't win. A, best comedy performance. B, best electronic since slash synth song. C, best children's recording. Or D, best engineered record. Well, I think the record was extremely well engineered, so I'm going to give them <laughs> that. <clears throat> Um, and I'm not sure that back in 1958, there was a category for synth because I don't think the <laughs> Vogue even was around until like 1960 or 61. So I'm going to say that it's the one that has the synth in it is the one that they didn't win. That is correct. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Great job, Wayne. Uh, and I'm going to give you two points for getting the correct answer. So oh, you are up to five points after uh, the first couple rounds of questions. <laughs> Does anyone else want to hear that remix, though? <laughs> <laughs> Can we add that to the, uh, the jail album that's coming out? <laughs> Ken, Does write this down it? for your album. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thanks, May. Uh, nice job, Wayne. And the votes are in for this round. And our winner is Rick Canavan. Rick Canavan will be moving on tonight. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, fun stuff. OK. Next up, we have Laura Clark and Corey Saunders. So Laura, do you want to go first or second? Uh, I'll go second, Sean. Okay, Corey, I'm sorry you missed the artist's uh, question by just it's one. Fine. By just one. Um, but you can go with either new or kids. New kids. Hit me with new. Let's do okay. that. All right, so your question is from Ken Green, and he asks, least optimistic Christmas song. And your two options are, Please, Daddy, don't get drunk this Christmas. <laughs> or or uh, it's not Christmas till somebody cries. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I think uh, the least optimistic song is the one about Daddy getting drunk because I just don't have any hope of that. I'm from Boston. That's a <laughs> thing we do here. It's a holiday. Have you ever had your uncle throw an empty whiskey bottle at you for funsies because he was shit-faced? Yes, you probably have, because that's what happens on Christmas. That's how we cope. I wish that wasn't a true story, but here we fucking are. Um, whereas, you know what, I think Carly Rae's song is just really a uh, commentary on the state of the world right now and on politics. And I, I don't see that so much as pessimistic, so much as I see that as a, a really artistic statement she's making. That's it. Mm. It's not Christmas till somebody cries. You know who cried on a cold night in Bethlehem <laughs> many years ago? <laughs> Just a couple of folks like you or me. Just try to find a place. To just stay safe for the night and give birth to their divine intervention baby. <laughs> and getting turned away left and right. And we celebrate that because ultimately the greatest thing came out of it, which was the Lord Jesus Christ was born in a manger, no less. A manger, <laughs> right? It's, wow. And yet here we have Carly Rae Jepsen just like ignoring all of that and <gasps> saying that the meaning of Christmas is tears. Uh, pass. Lighten up, CRJ. Jesus loves you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's what I'll say about that. Jesus's parents just shouldn't have been poor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if they had some money and a fucking house, they wouldn't have had to have a baby in a manger, but what do I know? And what? Carly Ray is a gay deity, so I will not have you slander her in my presence. That <laughs> is sacrilegious, and I think you need to fucking repent, Laura. That's what you need to do. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow, Corey. A deity? A 31-year-old Canadian, a deity? <laughs> a 
gay deity? <laughs> Deities don't even have gender, so. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, all I'm saying is, like, you know, Daddy, don't get drunk this Christmas. It strikes a note of hope. Maybe this year. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> a lot of good points here, uh, but it's going to be to the audience to choose their winner. So head into the poll right now. And I also would like to um, say that I think Corey has also given us another song title for um, for our Christmas album. And Jesus' parents should just shouldn't have been born. <laughs> Let's throw that one on the Christmas album. No, I agree. I agree. Being poor is a sin. <laughs> oh my god! So, uh, so go ahead and vote. The link is right below the video, uh, and uh, vote for your winner. And in the meantime, while people are voting, let's let's have a trivia question from May Keith. All right, Lloyd, you are. I'm I'm ready for you to make your redemption here. I can feel it. Are you ready? My head's spinning after that, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be great. Okay, so your question is, and I consider new Christmas music, like anything made after like 1970, because I feel like most Christmas music is from before that. Um, okay, so your question, which of the following is a real Christmas song written by Weird Al? Okay. The four yep. possible songs are a, run, run, Rudolph, they're after you. <laughs> Santa is killing in the name of. <laughs> C, Christmas at ground zero. Or D, all I want for Christmas is to poo. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, so... Um... Here's the thing about the four choices you just gave me. Uh, I feel like I want it. This is not what I'm going with. I want it to be C because I feel like Christmas at Ground Zero is the closure that we need. <laughs> but I also know that if Word Al is going to do anything, it's probably going to be tying off something familiar with a slight change of the narrative that we are familiar with, like eat it or fat. So I'm yeah. going to go with all I want for Christmas is to poo. That's such a good guess, because who would write a song about 9-11? Um, and not Weird Al, he didn't write a song about 9-11, but he did write a Christmas song called Christmas at Ground Zero. Uh, <laughs> wrote it before 9-11 about, I think, uh, something like the apocalypse? I don't know. Oh, shit. But really good, well-reasoned, well-argued. You're getting another point for that, Lloyd, so. <laughs> right on. Nice job, Lloyd. And thanks, May. The votes are in from this last uh, debate, and the winner is Laura Clark. So Laura will be moving on to the next round. We've got a lot of Jesus fans out there, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have thought at this time, you know, that Jesus would be someone so up there was voting for me, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why it counts as three. So. Yeah, I was like, well, how is it infinity <laughs> to nine? This is crazy. <laughs> um, all right, so our next matchup will be between Angela Sawyer and Ken Green. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> also, I just got that May meant the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It took me a minute, but I got there. Um, <laughs> And just helping anybody along that hadn't gotten there yet, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, Angela, do you want to go first or second? I want to go first. Okay, uh, so you can pick from classics, new kids, artists, or wild card. I'm going classics again. Classics, okay. Uh, so this question is from May Keith. She asks, in the past 12 days, 
your lover has gifted you well over a hundred birds. Is this unacceptable or do you allow it because you also got 40 golden rings? Oh, I allow it because uh, one of the things about owning birds <laughs> is that if you don't want to own them anymore, you open a window and boom, you have no more birds. <laughs> <laughs> I just got 50 gold rings and I got fat fingers. I'm going to need all of them. Uh, I am ready to uh, go out Christmas shopping, uh, just walking through Macy's, making everybody jealous, just doing this everywhere I go. And uh, it's going to be a great time. Um, if there's one thing I want, it's a partner who is just going to give me expensive gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. So I'm arguing that uh, getting the, I'm arguing against, wait, what am I arguing? I don't, yeah, you're saying it's unacceptable that you've received. Oh yeah, it's totally, it's totally unacceptable. Birds. Who wants to be a shit covered person with a bunch of rings? You look like a homeless person. And, uh, and nothing against <laughs> homeless people, but I don't want to be a shit covered guy walking around with a bunch of rings, especially bird shit. I've been shit on by birds before. It's not fun. And, and I, don't, I don't get deep into it, but just know that you shouldn't stand under the trees talking with your friends for a long time. Just trust me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I don't want I, the rings. Don't cover it up. I'm, I'm covered with shit, and then I gotta like keep birds too. You can't just let them. Somebody gave you those birds as a gift. You can't just like you, you, what are you gonna get a pair of socks? You're gonna open a window and throw your socks out? They gave you no. You can't. You can't. Do, you gotta keep those birds. So now I'm like covered with shit. I got a bunch of birds I gotta feed, and I, oh, I got some rings. I only have ten fingers. Okay, I can't wear forty. I guess I can wear forty rings and look like one of those. You know, like a you know strange person that wears like a bunch of bells and rings and everything, everything, <laughs> boys wherever they go. But I don't want that. No, it's not worth. It. The rings do not make up for having forty nasty. And some of those birds are huge. Those are like some <laughs> big birds in there. And they, partridges they're kind of small. But some other big birds in there. You got to take care of those. You got to buy food for them. You're getting shit on everywhere. Your house stinks. It's like <laughs> crap everywhere. I don't. I'm not, I was gonna say guano, but that's bats, right? Anyway, whatever. It's shit everywhere. No, your rings don't. Like, like, what's a ring? What's a ring? You can't, just something you put on your fingers. Whatever. No, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I got highly upset. I'm sorry. I'll calm down. <laughs> oh, just a ring idea. is a promise of love. And if that guy loves me, he's going to understand that there's no shit happening in this house. All the birds are going out the window. Also, I can sell 39. I can just call 1-800-CASH-FOR-GOLD. Sell 39 of those rings and still have more than I can wear. I'm rich now. What do I need that dude for anyway? So, so let me get this straight. He's giving you birds and rings, and you're getting rid of all of them. And this is that's not, I'm that's done. not love. It's like, you know what? With that guy. I'll, I'll just, I'll take what, what else I am I going to get out of him? <laughs> There's nothing it. else no, he can do no, for me now. No. You got to keep one of those. And I'm like, it's not worth those birds. Uh, the rings aren't worth it. Uh, you know what? Yeah, it's a show of love. No, no, giving you a bunch of birds is a show of love. It's a test of love. It's like, how much do you love me? Let me shove all these birds in your house and see how long you keep them. And if you keep them forever, <laughs> you, can I, you know. So no, uh, unless I can eat yeah. them. What kind of, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, a lot of good points here, but it's going to be up to the audience to choose the winner. So head into the poll right below the video, right in the description there. Uh, because I had stupid hashtag poll. And you can vote for either Angela or Ken this round to send one of them on to the finals. Um, and while we're waiting for the votes to roll in, uh, let's turn it back over to Makey. Thanks, Sean. All right, Wayne, it is your turn for a question. And uh, right. your question is going to be about a classic. Are you ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Okay, so this is about the classic uh, Hawaiian Christmas song that we all love. Mele Kalikimaka is the thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. What does Mele Kalikimaka mean? Your options are A, day of colonizer rituals. <laughs> B, may your day be joyous. C, all of your worries are now mine. Or D. It doesn't actually have a meaning. It's just kind of how you would say Merry Christmas in phonetic Hawaiian. I was looking for um, E. Um, it's Don Ho's middle name. 
but um, I guess that wasn't a possibility. Anyway, um, I really hope that it's just that Esperanto Hawaiian thing when you throw a bunch of letters and things together and instead of saying Hawaii or some of those other wonderful Hawaiian phrases, I think that it's probably the phoneticalization of Merry Christmas um, and take that, you nasty Portuguese. <laughs> um, I, I don't know about the Portuguese part, but you are correct about <laughs> this. Uh, basically, yeah, it kind of sounds like, kind of sounds like Merry Christmas, but with the Hawaiian phonetic alphabet. So D was correct. Good job. Uh, perfect game so far, Wayne. So that's going to be two more points for me. Um, but, you know, Rick and uh, Steve Albert also both have a point for uh, making different trivia contributions throughout the show. So look out for uh, those sleepers sneaking up. On us. Uh, you, Sean. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, May. And uh, nice job again, Wayne. I don't know the, the Portuguese thing. I, you know, my ex-wife is Portuguese, so I'm fine with it if you want to make fun of them. It's, <laughs> I was know, talking about Magellan <gasps> stopped there along the way and during his circumnavigation, and they were glad he didn't stay. Oh, okay. I thought you were just talking about, uh, I thought you were just blaming the whole country for her, and I was like, sweet, Wayne. I'm glad you're on my side. Um, you know. Uh, all right. So the votes are in, and we have an exact tie between Ken Green and Angela Sawyer. Uh <laughs> So I don't know what to do with that. I guess we'll just have to do another one before we figure out who moves on to face this next winner. Uh, so you guys are going to be working overtime during the holidays. I'm sorry, but. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time. Oh, okay. But I mean, look, I'm just, I'm just trying to buy more time so that we can finish this Christmas album before the end of the show. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so in the meantime, let's let's have a matchup here between Laura Clark and Rick Canavan. Hi, I'm here. Hey, Rick. Hey, Laura. Um, Hello. Laura, do you want to go first or second? Uh, second. Second. Okay. So Rick, you can pick between New Kids Artist Wild Card. I'll just go with New. New. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so your quest question is, which of these modern Christmas songs are you playing on repeat as you drive for Uber on Christmas Eve? And your options are, Santa stole my lady, or he's stuck in the chimney again. <clears throat> well, I, of course, uh, would be thinking she's stuck in the chimney again. Because that way, you know, they turn two, two birds with one stone. Uh, I'm able to sing a festive Christmas song, but also I can complete the 911 call I have to make. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Wow. So I obviously will not be listening to any Christmas song written after 1854, but <laughs> so I have to say, I do, I feel like metaphorically, Santa did steal my lady because my lady was the purity of the Virgin Mary and the sacrifice she made of her best teen years raising the <laughs> son of god all right and then along comes all this commercialization santa malls <laughs> feeling the meaning of christmas you want to go sit on santa's lap surrounded by elves when you could go sit in the lap of the lord and be surrounded by peace and the ox and the ass. <laughs> I just, I don't understand it, but it's Santa's fault. Final answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, hello, operator. Yeah, she, she's still in there. <laughs> we were cleaning it up for Santa. 
Yeah, I can hold. Sure. Okay. It's nice to have a festive Christmas song. Uh, Santa stole my lady. Oh, I hate this song. This song's terrible. Time. You know what I'll be playing on repeat? Hallelujah from Handel's Messiah. <laughs> it's got all the catchiness of one of your newfangled sin hymns. Plus, it, it, it was so inspiring that it made the king of Austria stand up in his pew. And then everyone had to stand up in their pew. Because uh, he, the king w realized that he was just a king on earth, but the king of kings was so much greater. Yeah. <laughs> all right uh well a lot of good points here but it's gonna be up to you the audience to choose your winner so head into the poll right below in the description you can click on it and i'm on hold i really can't do this right now <laughs> <laughs> so right in the description you can vote for either rick or laura and uh while people are voting Let's uh, let's turn it back over to May Keith. Thanks, Sean. All right, Lloyd, you are getting another question of the new category, I think. I feel like you had a new question already, but that's okay. So your oh, okay. question is about Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas. This song came out in 1994. When did it reach Billboard's number one spot? Your options are A, in 1994, B, last year in 2019, C, once a year, every year since 1996, mm -hmm. or D, it has never actually hit number one? I think I know this one. Uh, I don't even know if I need to build up to it. I just, <laughs> I, I think I know this one. I'm confident that I know this one. And if I'm wrong, then I don't deserve to talk anyway. So, uh, <laughs> Last year. That is correct. Oh, shit. Great job, Lloyd. That was, I thought that one was hard. I assume, I honestly had assumed that it hit number one every single year. Um, yeah. But, so for that, Lloyd, I'm giving you three points. Good job yeah. with that one. Thank you. Nice job, Lloyd. And uh, yeah. And congratulations I mean to Corey, too, for, uh, for last year, for that hitting number one. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, I think you had a big part in it. I'm surprised that it didn't happen either, like, I don't know, like the second or third year that it was out or the yeah. year that Love Actually came out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the thing. It didn't take off the first year it came out. Like, it was a slow burn. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's the thing with Christmas songs, though, you know? It's like they take a while to become sort of a tradition, you know? So it's like. It's because I remember everybody who hated that song being very pissed off about that fact. Uh -huh. Yeah, those people don't know what joy is. <laughs> like, you know, there's there's like 14-year-olds on TikTok right now talking about, you know, that that old music by Mariah Carey. Like, oh God, we talk like, about <gasps> Frank Sinatra, you know? Like, they look at it the same way that we're like, oh, yeah, you know all those big band type of songs? You know, they think it's <laughs> old music. Oh, the one of those that killed me was when Katy Perry did the Super Bowl and Missy Elliott came out and people were like, why don't I know who she is? Her music slaps. She could be really big. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, the results are in from this debate. And our winner is Laura Clark. So Laura Woo! will be. Uh, Honestly, that's, I, I have to deal with this right now. So <laughs> they said they're sending the Space Force. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> so laura will be keeping christ and christmas in the finals here uh so yeah um but who is she going to face uh and we have to find out by having angela sawyer and ken green do a rematch and we're gonna need all of you to vote on this one because we can't have another tie we gotta get uh you know if you're thinking my vote doesn't matter it does it's the tiebreaker so uh once this is over make sure to vote so Angela and Ken, uh, let's see, Angela chose first or second last time. So let's ask Ken. Ken, do you want to go first or second? Oh, boy. You know what? I'll go first. I'll, I'll mix it up. I'll go first. Yeah. OK. Um, so do you want a question from kids 
artist or wild card? Oh man, uh, kids are from over there. Uh, wild card. Wild card. Okay. Yeah. yeah let's do that. Um. So your question. It's a very basic question, but um, this year, will you have a blue Christmas or is it going to be Holly Jolly? <laughs> Uh, being the antisocial person I am, uh, this is the holly jolly Christmas. Uh -huh. I, I don't have to travel anywhere. I uh -huh. barely have to buy presents. I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to go <laughs> around and hear people caroling and singing and, and going to the store and see. I'm ordering everything. I ordered a few things online. This is, probably, this is my best Christmas, actually. I hate to say it, but yeah, this is the best. I, I love a pandemic Christmas. I may have to do this uh -huh. every year. I may, I may come up with a new disease every year, just so I'm letting you guys know right now. So, yeah, I'll come up with something. I'll go and, like, eat a wombat <laughs> or, you know, you know, have a, have a, <laughs> have a, have a, have a caterpillar, caterpillar sandwich or something like that. Yeah. If it, if it means that I can stay home and enjoy this stuff, sure, I'm doing it. This is holly jolly. Bring it on. I'm, I'm enjoying this shit. Yeah. So, yeah, that's me. Well, Ken says that his pandemic Christmas is holly jolly, but honestly, with all the ventilators, how could you not choose blue? Uh huh. Oh, you were deep and dark, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, man. Let me steer back into a nice nope, too late. territory and say <laughs> that Christmas would not be what it is with the American Santa, the one and only king, the actual lord of our land, and that's Elvis. <laughs> the man who brought us the blue Christmas. And I don't care if you like him, you don't have to like what he sounds like, you don't have to like his face, you don't have to ever listen to him, you still have to acknowledge that he is the invention that makes America work. <laughs> And he had a blue Christmas, and so should we all. <laughs> well, first of all, Elvis, uh, you know, never did shit for me. Flat out racist. It was simple as plain, motherfucking man, John Wayne. Everybody knows what that's from. Uh, <laughs> come on, that's 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 uh, oh, anyway, never mind. Look that lyric <laughs> up. Look that lyric up. You'll you'll know Public Enemy when you hear him. Anyway, uh, but yeah, no, I'll, I'll stick with Holly Jolly because a. You know, I mean, granted, we're not completely out of the year yet. We got rid of an asshole in D.C. Uh, you know, a bunch of other assholes are going to be gone, too. This Christmas is probably, you know, the most impactful we're going to have. And I get to stay home. I don't have to go out anywhere. I don't have to, like, wrap presents. I don't have to die. <laughs> okay. So, uh, of all of the colors that Christmas is, like, I, honestly, I get tired of red versus green after, like, a month and a half of looking at CVS decorations. <laughs> and a blue Christmas sounds like a nice, just like a, like, when you finally get there. I don't know about you guys, but I grew up with a dysfunctional family, so Christmas was like a relief that the day afterwards it wouldn't be the holidays anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and blue the perfectly soothing color, like a Hall's cough drop, just like ah! something to take it down a notch so that you can get through the end of your day and get to tomorrow. <laughs> All right. A lot of good points here. Um, oh boy. You know, I couldn't choose somebody, and even us as a group couldn't choose somebody last time, but let's try to do it this time. Uh, it looks like there's 13 people in the voting uh app right now so uh we should have an odd number uh so just vote make sure you put your vote in there and um you know however uh, whoever wins this one will be moving on to the finals uh and in the meantime hey let's let's go to bay keith for some more trivia all right thanks sean uh so we're moving on to wayne and um i actually don't remember what category you guys chose but i want to ask my dominic the donkey question so that's <laughs> what we're gonna do <laughs> Yeehaw, yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> All right, Wayne. So your question is about the song Dominic the Donkey, which was written and recorded by Lou Monty. However, someone else is rumored to have financed the recording. Who is rumored to have financed the recording of this song? 
Your options are A, Frank Sinatra, B, the Gambino crime family, C, the donkey industry, which was in decline in the early 60s, <laughs> or D, the Church of Scientology. I thought you were going to say the Pope, but <laughs> Scientology was close enough. <laughs> um, I don't think that the Gambinos were sending their money that way at that time when I think they were spending it on things like heroin and some other stuff. So they're probably not likely to have been doing it. If it had been the Petrarchas, maybe, but not the Gambinos. You know, they're not really so much full of um, brotherly love or sisterly love or any kind of love for that matter. What was the first one again? Frank Sinatra. Um, maybe. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe old Blue Eyes could actually have decided to help out his friend, Mr. Monty, who I went to college with his, with his cousin, Al, by the way. But, um, uh, is that true? <laughs> yeah, I went to college with a guy named Al Monty, and he said that he was related to the guy that wrote Tom Nate the Donkey. I don't know if you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go with, with, with Blue Eyes and say he was the one that, that funded that um, recording. So, I mean, I don't really know very much about Frank Sinatra, but he seemed like a really judgmental, unpleasant person. And I don't really <laughs> like that song. <laughs> Uh, no, it's the Gambino crime family is rumored to have uh, financed the recording of Dominic the Donkey. Uh, but because you are somewhat tangentially Kevin Bacon separated from Lou Monty, I'm giving you a point for that. <laughs> so uh, I think right now, after four questions each, uh, you're leading Lloyd by two points. <laughs> so heading into the finals, there's some excitement here still. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Um, also, everybody should make sure to watch the Dominic the Donkey music video if you haven't already. <laughs> it, it, it really adds a whole nother level to the song. Um, so the votes are in and we have, uh, we have a winner this time. And Angela Sawyer will be moving on to the finals. So uh, the finals will be Laura Clark and Angela Sawyer. So Laura, do you want to go first or second? Um, I'll, I'll go first. OK, great. Um, so the only two um, categories that we have questions left in our kids and artists. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess I'll go with kids, even though there's only one kid we should be celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and that is obviously uh, the most important kid of Christmas. Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay. Yes, that's right, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't God. even get me started. <laughs> uh, He's funny now. <laughs> I get along with everybody on this show so well. Okay. That movie should have ended when he went into the church and sat down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, your your question about kids is. Um, Let's imagine, and I know you're not going to be a big fan of this one, but let's imagine that you are Santa Claus and uh, you're delivering gifts. Which of these gifts are you more comfortable delivering to a child? A hippopotamus or two front teeth? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, okay. So... I'm gonna go into character as some like 35 year old bitch who doesn't care right now. So the, uh, I, I gotta say two front teeth is kind of cool. I, it's like creepy, you know, but it's, you also know that the elves like snuck in and measured the holes and like <laughs> prepared like the exact implant. And like, that's so satisfying, especially cause he like, you imagine the kid wants to wake up with his two front teeth. So it's like a little bit of a different situation. You go through the chimney, but then you actually creep in the bedroom, open up the mouth, you know, screw in the teeth. Like, that's different. Every year he does 
does the same shit with like the boxes with the wrapped top that you just take <laughs> off and the big ribbon you have. This is so valuable, not to mention like what that can do for a child's confidence. <laughs> Fine. So this question is about my comfort as Kris Kringle. And I got to tell you, as Kris Kringle, I have, I am morbidly obese and nothing is going to make me more comfortable than shoving a hippopotamus down a chimney before I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if that, if that is what that small child wants in his life to be trampled by a hippopotamus to get the family room all wet, fine. But <laughs> just get the just get get it down there just get it down there let the bricks go and get it down there and and fine the kid get the kids get what the kids get what they want that is my job kids get what they want <laughs> i'm more comfortable with hippos <laughs> hey kids get what they want under my claws ship as well all right it's just this one wants wants to look like the other kids oh my god okay i can't get look forget it hippopotamus the pro teeth argument is making me too sad anti-hippopotamus rhinos are afraid of them you think you can tell tell them to go down a chimney <laughs> oh my god they're so angry about everything they rhinos <laughs> charge them and the hippo just stands there and the rhino's like never mind my mistake <laughs> Like you can be like, hey, Fiona, go down that chimney. Like, that's that's just going to be a disaster. You're going to waste some of your limited Christmas night time. <laughs> so, uh, nobody says I'm telling the, the, the hippopotamus to go down the chimney. I'm in a flying sleigh. I'm dumping the hippopotamus down the chimney. And honestly, if there's one thing, like, the hippos don't have two front teeth. They just have, like, four knobs. And it's, it's <laughs> like they're yes they're big they're just like if there's like we've all subscribed to Liz's in this Instagram being big is not a fucking crime. <laughs> let, let the hippo be happy. <laughs> Time for me. Time yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's a lot of good points, and there's no way that I can choose here. So it's up to you, the audience, to decide. Head into the poll uh, right below in the description on YouTube. You can uh, click on that and vote for either uh, Laura Clark or Angela Sawyer. And uh, while the voting is happening, let's kick it back over to May Keith for some trivia. Thanks, Sean. All right, so this is going to be our final question of the evening. So we're going to do something a little different. So uh, Wayne and Lloyd, I'm going to read the question. Please feel free to shout out the answer as soon as you know it. Um, I'll, I'll also read through the options, but if you like hear the option that you think is correct, go ahead and shout it out. The winner of this round gets three points and takes the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to keep things close and interesting. All right. So your kid category question is to finish the lyrics. This is from a, a beloved Christmas song. Uh, the lyrics go, you're a vile one, Mr. Grinch. You have blank in your smile. What is in the smile? Shout it out as soon as you know it. Options are A, cankers, B, termites. Termites! It's termites. <laughs> That's three points in just ah, oh, just losing by one small point, Wayne. Even though you got all of your other questions mostly correct, except the uh, one. Well, Kevin Lane, I was getting sleepy there, so I didn't quite. You know, <laughs> Wayne, can you finish the lyric? Would that be allowed if he could finish the lyric? If he can, yeah. If he can finish everything else, go for it. I say. <laughs> There is no way that I can finish through. All the thing I remember about that is stink, stank, and stunk. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you started, Wayne. The next line is, welcome to the Hotel California. <laughs> 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 we never so, leave. We could never leave. Very nice. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Well, congratulations to Lloyd. And uh, I think we're going back to the debate.
Yeah, nice job, Lloyd. And thanks, May, for running the trivia all night. Uh, that was very informative and fun. OK, um, so our results are in. And our winner for tonight in a close one is Angela Sawyer. Yes. Thank you. I can't. Laura's so good at debating. I was like, oh, I've <gasps> lost. So that's a big surprise. Thank you. It was a really fun one. And I yeah. think the real winners are everybody next year that's going to receive a free copy of Christmas from Jail or what was yeah. the name of it? Jail. Christmas in Jail. <laughs> yeah. With such tracks as what uh, I think the last one Katie said was Measure the Holes. <laughs> 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 Uh, the, the warden gave me presents. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's some good ones. There's some we good got ones. some. We got some good. We got some hot tracks coming out next year. So watch for that Christmas album, and um, it's been a lot of fun. So uh, thanks everybody for doing the debate tonight and for doing trivia, and um, thanks to everybody that was watching and everybody that wrote questions. Uh, it was a good time, and we'll see you all next Friday. Bye. Bye.